Last week, I finished one of my craziest projects ever, a Wii U game. I made and released it, and that was just crazy. I've never done that before. But while spending months banging my head on making a Wii game, I thought about what my next project would be. Would I make something cool like my Tetris 3D game? Would I do something theoretical like stock prediction? Or what? I don't know. But luck would strike at the perfect time. A few days ago at work, a kid destroyed our VR headset. And that sucks, because I need to file a broken equipment report. But that's until I googled it. It only costs about 50 to 60 bucks, so I just bought a replacement. But now I have a broken headset, and nothing to really use it with. If only there was something I could use it for. Something productive. Something interesting. To start, let's take stock of the Wii U gamepad and what it can do. Just like the Wii remotes, it has an accelerometer and a gyroscope. But it has something on top of that. It has a gravitometer. A gravitometer uses electricity to create a magnetic field. Then the Earth, or whatever you're standing next to, will mess up that field. This is a good thing, because we can measure the difference and we can know where the Earth is relative to the Wii U gamepad. I don't know of any games that actually use this function, but we're going to use the magnetometer, the accelerometer, and the gyroscope to create a system that supports 9 degrees of freedom. For context, your phone most likely uses 6 with an accelerometer and the gyroscope. We need to fuse together these three sensors, then we need to build a headset that accepts unmodified gamepads. We can use the Wii remotes as VR remotes, and then naturally we'll actually build a VR game, or this wouldn't work at all. So let's get to it, I guess. To start, let's implement 6 degrees of rotational freedom, because that should let us test the gamepad and the remotes as a proof of concept. If this works, we can move forward and add the ninth axis. This is our new Unity project, and besides some basics for setting up a Wii U game, we can add a camera on a pivot, and that's pretty much it. This pivot will pretend to be the Wii U gamepad, and will rotate one for one, as if it was in the real world. Then everything else can be based on this camera. I also set up a basic scene, so that we can get a feeling of depth and let us see some stuff. So let's build it, and then throw it onto the Wii U, and as we can see, we get a game. Pretty easy. We've done this before, but this is where it gets hard. The Wii U is treated differently than a Wii controller. Unlike a controller, we get to access it directly, but we need to do a bunch of other stuff to make rotations work. And the reason why is because I lied to you. In previous projects, we've tricked rotation by using the sensors to move it by a certain degree value and not actually try and match it one for one. But in VR, we need to minimize how much drift we have, and that means we need to actually know where we are rotating, and not just guess. And that's where this man comes in, Dr. Madwick, and his research on rotations is some of the best that I could find. He was able to take three different sensors and create his own filter that was low computation cost, but was pretty accurate, and it's called the Madwick filter. If you want to read more about it, I left all my articles in the description if you want to read them. But basically, what his papers are saying is that if you take all of the rotations and normalize it from the three different sensors, you can somehow combine them with some simple math and get more accurate representations of what you're doing. Now, when I say simple, I really mean simple for the computer. It's actually really weird, and we're going to see if we can do the math ourselves and not just copy and paste, which is really tempting right now. But the first step lined out in his paper is normalizing our three sensors. So let's do a short little lesson in normalization. Now you may think this scary, but I bet you've seen this before because all it is is taking a triangle and figuring out the long bit. And we know this as a squared plus b squared equals c squared or Pythagorean's theorem. The cool bit is that we can do this in three dimensions. We just take a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals d squared. And that's all we need to do for normalization. We just do this for all three sensors, and now we have step one complete. 
While I'm not going to go through the calculus involved with this, I do want to explain each step in a simple way, so that way you can understand what we're trying to do. Basically, we're trying to take our rotation and error correct using other sensors. So we can start with the gyroscope and then take the accelerometer and ask, hey, how wrong am I? And then make a fix. And the same thing happens with the magnetometer. It'll ask and then see if it's wrong, and then it'll fix it a little bit. And by doing this, we can build up errors and start correcting them as we go. And that way, eventually, we'll get a pretty decent path. It doesn't need to be perfect, but just close enough where no one's going to get dizzy when they try to move their head. So let's load it up onto the Wii U and see how bad it is. And actually, that's, that's really good. It does it really well, actually. And there's no real lag. I think this is running at its max frame rate for the gamepad. What that tells me is that we can finally move on and figure out how to make the rest of this game. And most importantly, if we can build our own VR headset out of the Wii U gamepad. My first idea to build the headset is to literally just take the Wii U and plop the broken Oculus on top, so that way we can keep all the lenses and all the straps and all that good stuff. The weird part is, how do we even attach the thing? Because I want it to look good and be able to actually swing my head around. And with my preliminary testing, it looked like I couldn't focus on the gamepad screen. I knew it was possible because I was able to pop out the lenses and actually look through them manually, and I was able to focus. So I need a way to somehow shave down the front so that way I can get the screen and the lenses closer together. I took my 3D printing snippers and started tearing off the front of the headset. And while that took forever, I was able to get it to work. With it sanded down, it was time to start building a harness. I decided to use LEGO to start and then 3D print a final product. This process did not take too long, but the biggest issue that I was having was the headset moving left and right and the gamepad sort of just flying out. My solution was good old string, and while it wasn't the best, it did hold it in place long enough for me to be able to make this test product. Lastly, I added foam letters so that way I wouldn't get cuts on my face from wearing this thing for too long. And while it may look stupid, it did stay on long enough for me to be able to show its craziness to people. And for Lego and String, it really did seem to stay together pretty well. Which means it's time to 3D print a way to attach the gamepad to the headset without me having to hold it up. I started off by using Blender, but soon enough I decided to just install Fusion from my school and start using Fusion 360 to build this thing. It had better measurements and all that good stuff to make sure that everything was correct. And once it was ready, I threw it onto my printer and prayed that it would just work. 26 hours later, I came back to this gorgeous masterpiece. I did a dry fit to make sure it would go on my face and everything would fit, and it worked. The next day I went to Home Depot, picked up some stuff, and then headed to work. Alrighty, so it finished printing, and it's looking pretty good actually. Um, there's just one small problem, and that is that the gamepad doesn't fit all the way up. It's being blocked by my own mistakes. So I did a 90 degree, right? But then I beveled it like an idiot. So before I finish it and paint it and make it look beautiful, I need to actually somehow get that bevel away or I need to reprint this, and I'm not going to reprint this. So. The solution is to melt it away. Uh, don't do this, ever. Don't do this, ever. Um, I'm an idiot, professionally, so never do this. After preparing my headset and the soldering iron, I decided to go outside so that way I didn't get anything crazy. And once again, I will say, please, never do this. You never want to use a soldering iron like this. Never do it. But it did work however crazy it may sound. Okay, so success it is connected and I also got rid of that bevel. Now, the pop, no, cool. All right, so I put the Wii U up here. These, for the love of everything. I made it worse. Alright, 
So next means pretty much sanding this down and doing some fixing. I got most of the plastic out of the way, now it's just to clean it up. And the gamepad is fitting in better in certain spots, but I just gotta even this out and make it completely compatible. As you can see on this side, it's reaching all the way down. I gotta fix this side though. I'm not gonna go back out to the plastic melter, <laughs> but um, I got sandpaper, I got my snippers, I got some other tools, I'm gonna see if I can finish the job. So, uh, yeah. I started sipping away as much melted plastic that wasn't supposed to be there, and then I started sanding it as hard as I could, just to get as much stuff out of there. And I basically had a pile of junk after. Okay, so, I've pretty much gotten it to fit. Now I just gotta clean this up, I gotta sand this down a whole bunch, and we're gonna use wood filler to make this thing really stand out. This stuff looks disgusting, but uh, we'll try it out. While wood filler is really good for small things, I was trying to fix very big gaping holes that I made, and it wasn't really the right tool for the job. In the end, I actually had more problems than good by using it, but at least I have it, and I can make my 3D prints look really nice later on. Okay, so it is completely filled in with wood filler now. Um, it's actually drying pretty fast, which is good. And it looks like this is gonna work, which is horrible. Uh, it's amazing. I need to sand this still, but this is dangerously close to being done, and I'm super excited. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna sand this down, and maybe I'll give it a coat of primer, and then we can see where we'll go. Before I finished everything off, I decided to try and attach the headset to the gamepad. And the way I did this is I used some broken pieces off of the Oculus, and I was able to rebuild the back that I basically tore off. But this is where the mistake happened. I tried to use the wood filler instead of literally anything else to do this. And you're about to see what I had to do to fix it. All right, round two. So, I've successfully attached everything. And now we need to sand it and then make it more secure, just a tiny bit. Um, and then hopefully everything should work. It should just be fine. This, uh, this wood glue has been really nice. And we're gonna duct tape this side. We're gonna make this a little nicer. Sand it down, prime it, and then, um, that's gonna take a bit though. So we'll probably start working on the game, part of the game. It ended up that I had to use duct tape to make it stay together at all. Now, a few days later, it looks like that wood filler has completely dried and it would have stayed together if I didn't keep touching it. But I wanted to sand it and I just didn't do it in the right order. Lesson learned, I should have waited or just 3D printed a new thing in the first place. But it's duct taped now and it should be okay. However, I wasn't able to paint it. And because of my horrible mistakes, the gamepad wouldn't stay inside of the harness. So, I actually did something really smart, and I just flipped the whole thing, so that way gravity would hold it in place. <laughs> it feels so wrong, but now we gotta build a game around the headset and controller combo. But, um, for my testing so far, it's, uh, it's a bit awkward. It's really heavy. Like, ungodly heavy. But, we should be able to build a better game. Right now I have, like, a gun game working where you can point a gun and then shoot, but it kind of sucks, and I kind of want a better game. What if we made Beat Saber, but better? I'm thinking that if we steal Guitar Hero songs from Clone Hero, and then somehow code it to convert it to Beat Saber stuff, we can spawn some cubes, throw them at the player, and then you just sort of go ham. Hard part is gonna be like syncing it up and like kind of getting it to work, we gotta sync it up to the beats, we gotta play music correctly, audio, screen, motion... Eh? I started building my Guitar Hero clone thingy by removing everything else and adding five spawn points for the five Guitar Hero notes. Now they're gonna spawn cubes that you hit, like in Beat Saber, but by doing this we can kind of move some things around and really get a game going really quickly. I then added a note script that I'll keep everything together and be able to spawn these notes whenever I need them. I also created a script that would actually move our notes so that way they can actually move toward the player. And in the end, it didn't turn out too bad. It actually looked pretty good. Now we just have to be able to get the songs from Clone Hero. 
Clone Hero is a recreation of Guitar Hero for the PC, and it uses all of the same songs and formats that the original games did. So you could rip your song or make your own song and then be able to play it with the original guitars. There is even a repository of these songs that people have made called charts. And inside of those files, there is a file called a chart file. We're gonna take this, convert it to a text file, and then I can parse it in Unity for all of the notes and spawn them at the correct times. For testing, I got Crab Rave, and then I took the file and took what I needed. This is that chart file I was talking about, and all of these different entries are when the note happens, what kind of a note it is, and then basically that's it. We get to just spawn it. The next few days had me banging my head against trying to make all of this sync up, so that way the player could actually hit the note on the beat. This is really complicated, and I'm not going to get into it in this video, but if you want me to follow up one day with a Guitar Hero game, just yell at me and I'll probably do it eventually. Probably soon too, I've been really playing it recently. But once I got it working close enough, it was time to playtest my game with everything set up, and see how terrible it is. Oh crap. Okay, alright, okay, okay. Oh, only one remote works. Okay. That's a little broken. Ah. Come on. Just you. You. Okay. 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 I need to fix the other controller. You. Okay. Okay. You, this one. Yes. Okay. Ah. That's the one. No. No. This is not anywhere close. So that wasn't what I expected. It looks like I need to fix my camera rotations and also my controllers. But after I did that, it's going to look like this. Okay, all lined up this time. All right, round two. Let's try and make it work this time. One, two, perfect. On you go. Oh, okay, okay. Uh. Well, my camera's, my camera's messed up again. That sucks. One moment. All right. Let's try this again. Come on. Ah. Ah. Oh, I'm missing these. Oh, 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 oh. This other one doesn't exist anymore. Ah. Uh. Why does it look so weird? And my screen is blurry. Well, that sucked. <laughs> Rotations have failed me so badly. Learning about <laughs> learning about nine axis movement uh, was really fun, but uh, I think I think I need to move on. This has been a fun project, but I think I think it's it's time to die. Um, I think I should make other stuff for a little bit that's not Wii related because I think I burned myself out a bit. But just think of the think of the possibilities. Well, all I'll say is that next time we're doing a game jam, back to video games, please. Anything video game related that's actually a game and not just sensors and more sensors. <laughs>